ever wondered why some cross sections are better than the others at resisting applied bending moment even though the area is same? Why beam depth is always more than its width? Bending depends on the geometric property of the section called area moment of inertia or second moment of area. Deeper beams will have more second moment of area. Today, I will help you understand moment of resistance and stress distribution in rectangular cross-section beams. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In today's lecture, I will cover two key topics. One is moment of resistance and other is stress across a section. This is how my lecture is organized today. First is stress distribution across a section and I will be mainly covering rectangular section. And then moment of resistance. Studying moment of resistance is absolutely important because if you want to know if a beam can resist some kind of loading, if this is a beam, if I'm applying loading, if I want to know that it can resist that bending, then I should know its moment of resistance. And this is the basic principle that we apply to design any building and any bridge. The basis of stress distribution is engineer's bending equation, which I covered in my previous lecture in, uh, on section properties as well. So this is the basic equation m over i is equal to sigma over y e over r. And I can rearrange this equation sigma is equal to m y over i. Now, how do we work out stress across a section? when the section is bending about horizontal axis and vertical axis what does it mean by horizontal axis if i have this section if i am applying loading on this section in this direction it is bending in horizontal direction and if i am holding this ruler like this and applying loading it means that i'm in vertical direction neutral axis does not have any stress at all the top portion is in compression the bottom portion of the section is in tension so this is how we draw the stress and this is how the stress diagram will look like it depends on how much is the distance from neutral axis the distance from neutral axis is maximum then stress is going to be maximum this is what we call as linear stress distribution sigma x stress in x direction is equal to m which is applied moment times y y is distance from neutral axis divided by ixx ixx is second moment of area uh, this is stress in major axis direction x means major axis direction this is this position if i'm holding a ruler like this and applying loading this is really very strong this is the major axis if i'm holding a ruler like this it is applying moment in y direction and you can see that it will bend quite a lot so now minor axis stress distribution this is how minor axis stress distribution looks like the distance away from neutral axis is termed as x so sigma y is equal to m x divided by i y y i y y is second moment of area in minor axis direction sigma is equal to m y over i m is the moment which is normally taken as the maximum bending moment i is second moment of area which is a geometric property it depends on the section dimension sigma is a stress which is calculated at a position of applied moment at any distance from centroid of the section where y is the distance in vertical direction distance from centroid to the point where stress is calculated in case of major axis stress we will calculate y in case of minor axis stress we will calculate x now how do we get applied moment the answer is very simple it depends on loading and i will take two very simple cases if there is a simply supported beam a uniformly distributed load is applied then first we draw the shear force diagram which is w l over 2 w is distributed load in kilonewton per meter and bending moment is going to be w l square over 8 where l is the length of the member another case a very simple one is a central point load where we 
apply load p shear force is simply going to be p over 2 and this is how we draw a shear force diagram in case of bending it will be p l over 4 where p is applied load in kilonewton l is the span of the beam and 4 comes from the formula how do we work out second moment of area and i will take you to my lecture on section properties as well and i will briefly show you how do we work it out second moment of area about centroid for common shapes if section is rectangular it's very simple area is b times d ixx is bd cube over 12 note that there's a cube in the depth dimension if depth is more it means that i is more it means section is really very efficient in terms of bending now here if i am trying to apply bending the section is quite stiff and strong in terms of resisting bending and i y y is db cube over 12 it is a weaker side or minor axis side if i have a triangular section then area is half b h b h cube over 36 is i x x h b cube over 36 is i y y if i have a circular section then area is pi over 4 d square i x x is pi d power 4 over 36 and i y y is same take example of this loading applied we have section through a a and this is a rectangular section simply and we have x axis we have y y and we have centroid because it's a symmetrical section and that's the reason centroid is going to be at the center of the section sigma x is equal to m y over i x x and then we will have compressive and tensile zone remember that whenever we are applying loading the top of the beam is reducing in size and the bottom of the beam is stretching it means that the bottom is going to be in tension and top is going to be in compression so if i'm applying loading like this the bottom is trying to stretch the top is trying to compress so first we have compressive stress when we have y1 we can work out sigma 1 in this formula m stands constant i stands constant the only thing changing here is y in case of tensile stress you can see we have y6 and sigma 6 sigma 2 y2 sigma 5 y5 sigma 3 on compressive side and then sigma 4 on tensile side and finally we put this line to complete the stress diagram this is known as stress diagram and this is linear elastic distribution most of the time in civil structural and mechanical engineering we use linear distribution to design the elements neutral axis is the axis which passes through the centroid of the section and it does not have any stress attached to it the stress is zero at neutral axis moment of resistance sigma is equal to my over i we can rearrange this equation to work out m i can say m is equal to sigma i over y this will give me moment of resistance it will give me the moment capacity of the section in any design what we do we work out applied moment and we compare this applied moment with the moment of resistance that is how we work out moment of resistance in any structural mechanical or civil engineering design mxx is sigma x ixx over my this is moment in major axis direction it means that if this is the beam if you are applying loading over here this is mxx myy on the other hand if i'm turning it to 90 degrees now i'm applying loading this is a bit flexible and that is termed as minor axis bending resistance this is major and this is minor let's solve one example calculate the maximum stress in the timber beam as shown we have a beam a central point load is applied span of the beam is four meter the section is 60 millimeter wide and 250 millimeter deep first let's work out the reactions and reaction is very simple you have to divide the load by two if i'm applying loading over here if 10 kilonewton is applied it will be distributed equally between two supports so five kilonewton and maximum bending moment when central point load is applied is pl over 4 p is 10 l is 4 divided by 4 we get this 10 kilonewton meter y bar is the distance from centroidal axis to the extreme top or bottom fiber 
I is B D cube over 12. B is 60, D is 250. So we replace these values here and we work it out as 78.125 into 10 raised 6 millimeter power 4, not 6. Maximum stress is at maximum distance from centroid at top or bottom of the beam. Sigma x is equal to m y bar over i x x. m is 10 and I convert it into Newton to millimeter. That's why I multiplied with 10 raised 6. y bar is 125 divided by 78.125. In fact, to 10 raised 6, we get 16 Newton per millimeter square. This is the maximum stress that this beam can take. Now, how can we work out the stress distribution? Let us see. Stress distribution across the timber rectangular beam section. I is this value, which we worked out earlier. M is this value, which we worked out a little earlier. This is how we work it out. We divide the section into number of equal areas. How many equal distances do we divide our section into? So it really depends. So if you have 300 millimeter deep section, if you like, you can divide it into 30 equal intervals. So here I've divided it into five equal parts. So each part is 25. And then we work out sigma as my over i. Here m is constant, i is constant. These are the values and only y is changing so let's see how we can do it first is 125 millimeter from the centroid to the bottom now this distance depth from the bottom is zero we work out tensile stress as 16 we simply replace value of y as 125 m and i they remain the same when y is 100 the stress is going to be 12.8 and this is tensile stress remember tensile stress is positive and compressive stress is negative when we have 75 millimeter distance stress is 9.6 when we have 50 millimeter stress is 6.4 when we have 25 millimeter stress is 3.2 when we have zero then what will be stress no stress of course it is neutral axis at neutral axis you will not have any stress at all stress is zero and then minus 25 millimeter minus indicates the compressive side compression is always shown by negative sign we have negative 3.2 newton per millimeter square then minus 50 we will have minus 6.4 minus 75 millimeter we will have nine minus 9.6 then minus 100 we will have 12.8 minus 125 we are getting minus 16 and then simply you can draw a line to attach these two let us now talk about second example where we want to find out moment of resistance for a rectangular beam now calculate moment of resistance for concrete beam now the difference over here is that in case of last example we had same stress on tension and compressive side but here we have different stresses concrete is not a homogeneous material like steel steel is a homogeneous material where stress and tension and compression is going to be the same and here it is concrete in concrete the tensile stress is almost negligible most of the time it is 10 percent of its compressive stress so compressive stress is given 30 newton per millimeter square tensile stress is 3 newton per millimeter square we have to find out if this section is adequate to support a distributed load of 10 kilonewton per meter so span is 6 meter w is 10 kilonewton per meter the section size is 100 by 300 millimeter Let, let's first of all work out the bending mode so shear force is wl over 2 30 kilonewton moment is w l square over 8 w is 10 l span of the beam is 6 we work it out as 45 kilo newton into meter the section is 100 by 300 y bar d over 2 it is 150 millimeter i x x is b d cube over 12 b is 100 d is 300 divided by 12 again there is a typo it is millimeter power 4 why we worked out ix we worked out compressive stress allowable is given which is 30 newton per millimeter square tensile stress is very small it is 3 newton per millimeter square moment of resistance in compression is equal to stress in compression which is 30 i access remains the constant and y is constant we get 45 into 10 raised 6 newton into millimeter moment of resistance in tension on the other hand is very small it is 4.5 into 10 raised 6 newton into millimeter 
moment of resistance in compression we worked it out 45 kilonewton meter in tension it is 4.5 kilonewton meter applied moment is 45 into 10 raised 6 since moment of resistance in compression is greater than or equal to applied moment it means that the section is fine in compression since moment of resistance in tension 4.5 is far less than applied stress it means that the section is not okay in tension so what do we do in that case in that case we need a steel reinforcing bar that will resist the tensile stress that's why you would have seen in reinforced concrete beams these bottom bars the bars that you see over here that is the reason we use these bars to resist tension 